Hey everybody and welcome to another RCT2 hacking tutorial. Uh, today is hacking tutorial number 12 and we are going to be building a custom swinging ship uh, like you see right here. So this follows a pretty similar thing to what we did for the disco um, but it's not diagonal and I'll explain why we're not going diagonal um, but um, it's a pretty similar approach, pretty similar shoestring, so we'll go take a look at it, and then um, we'll uh, show you how to do it. So, let's go over to our little pre-made one here. So, uh, what we're doing with this is, um, like usual, uh, starting with a station and going out, splitting the train apart, reversing it, putting it onto this dummy track, while below we have um, our control um, that moves the ride back and forth through the number of sequences so pretty straightforward pretty easy and um, simple so the reason why we don't do diagonal for the swinging ship is that i want to go a little bit higher up so if we go over and look at that uh, disco here you can kind of see that we go to the steep and that's about it well you want a continuous arc for the ship and the ship goes higher than a disco does so rather than just extend this up in the same direction, just kind of go straight on either side, we want that continuous uh, type arc. So we're going to go ahead and do it like this. Now, granted, it's not a perfect circle, um, as you can see. It's certainly a lot tighter on the top than it is down at the bottom, but that's, that's okay. It's something we can live with. And um, what we're going to do instead is just... Uh, extend one vertical and then we'll do the quarter loop on either side but we're not going to go too too far up the thing so we don't want to go like all the way upside down you're going to go just a little bit past vertical and that's about as far as you want to go now i'm also using the uh, vertical coaster uh, the bnm dive coaster train um, i've seen a lot of different options used so i've seen a uh, wooden coaster uh, the two by two uh, PTC trains used and that's a good option also. Uh, I like these because they um, are wide so you know a standard swinging ship might seat four across maybe five across some of the larger ones six across. I mean there's some super huge ones in Japan that can seat ten or more across but um, I, I think this one is the the best looking one for what we're trying to do here. Uh, you can also theme the the car kind of in its home position and then the the ship will do its thing and it'll kind of swing through the scenery but then at least you have the home position um that has some theming to it i chose not to do that over on this one uh, so i did our platform here which is nice because you can see the guests the guests kind of walking along that um and then we have the the swing itself uh on either side and then i just did some theming around it and i did do the um, the two arms coming down with the junior coaster here um, so that when it is stopped it does kind of look like the, the the one is sitting there so you can do that if you want but I don't think it's a requirement um, to to do any real heavy theming around it it can look good though uh, it just depends if you want it to look weird when the thing's operating so let's uh, go ahead and recreate this it's not um, not too difficult of one to do so let's get our vertical drop coaster here which we are going to change up in just a little bit, but I'll start with that. So we're going to start one above where we actually want our dummy track to be. Um, so the reason behind that is that with the arc of the um, dummy track here, the station is kind of more on the level of the whole thing. So I'm really preferring that it would be at uh, kind of the average level and the guests are going to look more natural getting onto it when it's sitting up up a little higher so we'll start it there we'll go ahead and place our entrance and our exit uh, and then we're going to go straight into another track uh, so that way you can delete this one later if you want um, and we'll go one straight bit here actually back this guy up so we will go ahead and merge this in so there's one so now we're merged in we're going to go through the corner, and now we're going to get up high. So we'll take our chain lift. Um, and again, this is all variable, so you can you can do what, what you want with this. And by the way, if you haven't watched the other videos, um, as kind of a prerequisite, we just check all the boxes here, except for the building it invalid track heights for now. Um, the 
Uh, we also have uh, disable clearance checks on. That's sort of just a standard thing. Um, so I'm, I've kind of stopped mentioning it in the videos. Um, so if you do need to see that, then uh, maybe go back and check a couple of those off too. All right, so now we're level. We're at uh, level 10 here. I'm just kind of following uh, the numbers here. Four, if you're building this kind of while we go, we're going, uh, we're sloping up, doing a tight curve, and then going one, two, three, four before we level off. So that's uh, 10 height. So we're going to take off the chain lift and we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then we'll slope up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then we'll slope up and go one more. Okay, so now we want to build our uh, two reverses. So we're going to split off the front car as per usual, and then we'll send the rest off in a different direction. So we're going to get rid of the slope up here, and we're going to go 1, 2, and 3, and then we'll slope down steep and we'll pick that up in a little bit. Now we're going to put back that slope upwards and we're done there. Okay, so now we go back to the front here. We're going to go one, two, three, click that one and remove it. Now come back here and we're going to build an S bend out. And so this setup is uh, properly spaced and properly arranged so that the um, control single or the front vehicle, which is the control uh, car, is going to hit the station underground the guy on the yellow there, at the same time that the rest of the train hits the exact position that we want it to up top. So you can do this in a different setup if you want, but just be warned that you're going to have to adjust the timing to do so. All right, so we have our S-Bend here, so now let's take a look and see what we've got to do. Let's turn a little so we can see this maybe a bit easier. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to go turn twice. And that actually is going to get us in line with our ride here. And then we're going to go a couple more. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to use the slope up here. So we're using the uh, upper track here to do the reverse piece. You can actually see down below uh, this sticking out here. We, we're not using the, um, the underground one. You can do either one. Um, when you set your ride up, it doesn't matter which one. All of the cars contain um or, or contribute to the mass of the vehicle so if rather than this one if the one down at the bottom had the big slope up then it would be operate similarly okay so let's go back to our uh drop underground here and then we're gonna do one steep track and then we're gonna go back to the shallow the one two three again one two three again and that gets us down here so now we're going to put in a couple of brakes. Um, you don't need all these brakes. I just have them for whatever reason. Um, and they're going to... Let's, uh, so this one I've kind of gone with 18 and then uh, down to 9 at the very end here. Um, and that is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then 7 is going to be the 9 mile an hour one. So let's take our brakes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we said seven here. All right, then we're just going to go out. We don't actually need to count these. We can go out as far as we want because uh, it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> okay. So before we do the bottom bit, we're going to do a couple of different things. So first of all, we're going to go select a twister coaster for up top. We want something that has the steep slopes like this and also the quarter loop. So this is the, a good option for that, um, any of the B&M type tracks. Uh, so we're going to put this on the ground, like I said, one underneath where the station is, and then we'll slope up. We're going to put a, uh, an additional straight section in there, the vertical section, and then a quarter loop. And then we're going to go the uh, other way here. So first things first, though, we're going to get out of this. Now we're going to remove this again. We'll go vertical again, one extra, and then a quarter loop. And now we're going to go back and put this one back in. <clears throat> so the reason we do that is that if you ever delete this one here, then um, if you merge, say, this green track here straight in um, further down, which it doesn't have the steep slope anyway, so you couldn't do it. But if you did um, and you deleted this one later, that would delete that whole section of track and your ride would crash. So you just kind of want to avoid that. Anyway, so we'll remove this one here, uh, this curve, and then we're going to go ahead and merge this in. 
Um, make sure when you put in your um, dummy track here, the BNM in this case, you're heading in the same direction as the um, split track. So the split track is going right to left on our screen here uh, on the section that I have highlighted and then is going to be doing the same on the, the dummy track here. <clears throat> okay, so it's merged in, and then we're gonna go ahead and put this one back because we didn't. Remember, these are all reverse merges, so you're gonna build the exit first, and then you'll build the entrance uh, back into it afterwards. So this one, this one, this one, and the one we're gonna do down below, same deal. Okay, so now we have um, our uh, track here so this is going to be our uh, control track underneath the yellow one uh, so you can see we put the station as three tiles um, starting uh, on the left hand side here um, of the the two steep slopes <clears throat> excuse me so that is this one right here um, and so you can kind of see this is the first of these four tiles that make up this one and then the opposite side is is this guy here so we're going to take another poster and put it below and around and let's go see this, turn on our height markers so we can make sure we get it at the right height, negative four. And then we're going to build three back, well, two back, so three total. And now we're going to go forward as many as we want. This one over here is optimized. You can adjust it later if you want because it's not the ride that's actually running. You can adjust this one on the fly. Um, so not an issue there. And then we're gonna build backwards as far as we wanna go also. Okay, so now the key uh, bit here is just bringing this guy over and in. So you can see that the curve here comes off of that last break. We're gonna actually delete that last break here, the nine mile an hour one. And then we're gonna go in and build the curve then we're gonna go straight until this intersects. So we intersected it through there and that creates a merge because this is a straight piece and this is a straight piece. They're just at uh, 90 degrees from each other. So um, it's gonna merge itself anyway. Uh, so now we'll go back here and we're gonna build that uh, negative or nine mile an hour break done. Okay, so that's the setup right there. Uh, we're pretty much done at this stage. So what we have to do is a couple of things. So first of all, we're gonna go in here and Reduce our trains, get this down to one train with nine cars because we want eight cars on top and the one car down at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and do that. We want to use powered launch passing the station because that lets us go back and forth here. One of the cool things about powered launch is you can see it picks up a little bit of speed over time. So that first launch isn't quite the full power. Uh, it takes rocking through a couple of times to get to the full power. Uh, which is kind of nice because that way it kind of speeds up just a little bit. And the reason we have three tiles worth of station here um, is just so that it, it kind of slows down and then eases its way into the station. So uh, we uh, we kind of slow down there without the need for brakes because if you do brakes, then it becomes a bigger complicated shoestring about um, when it uses the brakes on which cycle and everything like that. You'll notice we don't have a cycle option here, uh, whereas over here we do. You can see that seven. The way you get around that is take this vertical drop cars and we're gonna change it to something like the mini coaster and that will let us get our uh, cycles here. So seven is what I'm using. You can really use anything, but we're gonna actually start on one uh, because we want it to actually just park down at the bottom. So let's uh, give it a try. And actually we need to up this two to 33 because that's the launch that gets to what I consider the optimal height. We're gonna close this again. We're going to take a look at this. So <clears throat> that lift is set for four miles an hour, and it just so happens that the four miles an hour splits this like we want. So if you're having um, more than one car go down below or something isn't right, just check your lift speed and where the lift stops. Uh, I only have it on the sloped bits. The flat bits are all free flowing. So we're going to slow down with the brakes down below, and then you can see here we'll slow down almost, and then we stop. It will take the corner down below as the dummy one drops, and now it's going to hit right there in the center. It's a bit of an optical illusion because the station huts are offset by one. You can't have them exactly in the center because of how we have this set up. I wanted it to be a continuous curve, not a not have a straight piece in the bottom. 
Um, so you can't really get them exactly centered. You can offset them if you want, like have the entrance on the one side and then the exit maybe one tile over, but there's no need for it really. Okay, so now we can go back in and we're going to up this to 7. And once we do that, then we'll test it and you can see that it doesn't go very high up the first time. But the second time, up some speed there. And then one more should get this up to full speed. There we go. So now it's operating like we want it to. And you can adjust that height. If you want this to go higher up, you can do it. Um, like I said, I really wouldn't recommend going much past vertical because that's kind of what a swinging ship does is it goes to maybe say 100 degrees uh, rather than 90. And that's about it. Uh, we're going to build a scream and swing a little bit later on. Uh, and that one's going to go higher because those do go higher on the, the real thing. Those are at like 120 to 130 degrees um, off of level. So that's pretty much it now. So what we're going to do is go through and make our stuff invisible. So um, first thing first, we're going to take our dummy track and we're going to turn that into submarine because we want a track ride so it doesn't get messed up. Um, so we're going to leave that one there. Then we're going to get the um, splitting one here and change that into a uh, one of the flat rides, make that go away. We will uh, leave our dummy track underneath because there's really no reason for it not to be there. And then these bits here, um, I'm going to actually go through and make them invisible um, on uh, uh, one by one. So this is, we'll call this just ship. And we can recognize which ones we're picking. All right. And the reason that I'm doing this rather than... Uh, another option like changing it to elevator or any of those is because I don't want to drop the uh, the train. So if you change it over, the train elevation is going to sh uh, shift just a little bit, and I just don't want that. I would much prefer the uh, ride to be at the level that it is, and it's just not too much for us to say to throw in seven of these null objects. It doesn't take long at all, as you can see. All right, so there we are, and it's done. And now all it takes is some theming. Um, if you're using custom scenery, uh, the B&M supports are a good option. Just separate them by a tile and then you can have your mechanism up here for your motor house and uh, everything else. And then you can put your platforms on either side. Uh, so lots of, lots of good options to do there. But anyway, uh, that is all for today. Hopefully you uh, learned something new and we will be back for more. So let's take a look at our uh, overall park here. We're getting bigger. We've got a number of flat rides here, a couple of tracked rides. Um, coming soon, I think we're going to maybe fill this space in here, and maybe we'll connect across to uh, make our park a full loop here soon. Uh, so that's a bit of foreshadowing there, but there's plenty more to come. So um, feel free to join in the next one, and if you guys have any uh, suggestions, things you want to see, uh, feel free to uh, reach out and let me know. So uh, until next time, thank you very much for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed.